What's up WordPress nerds? In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you a couple of things to think about when you're trying to choose a page builder for your next freelance project. The reason why I'm doing this is because not all WordPress sites are as templated as you might lead yourself to believe as a, as a freelancer. Not every single page is gonna be custom. Not every single um, template is going to be built by you. And so that's kind of where page builder comes in is where you can create a set of components for your client to use and be able to create as many different types of pages as they want. So it's a very core part of kind of the WordPress experience in many cases. So I'm just going to go over a couple of things to think about when you are choosing one. So the first thing that I like to think about is, are you going to be used developing your own components? Now there's kind of different types of clients. One is like where they just kind of need something, but they don't really know where to begin. So they're just essentially asking you to get a page builder in there and drag and drop some stuff around. People are getting more and more comfortable with that. So maybe you might not run into this as much, but it's still definitely a thing people ask developers to do. So if they are asking for that, then yeah, there's, there's going to be some things that you're going to take into account that we'll talk to uh, talk about a little bit later, but let's kind of think about this as if you are going to be the one building out all the components. So you install the um, page builder, you essentially remove all of the pre-built components and you will then substitute your own. So things that you're going to need to think about when it comes to this is what is extendable. Are they going to be able to let you um, have your own custom um, inputs for the user? Like if you're going to be able to have, you know, multi selects and drop downs and text fields and repeaters and HTML blocks and image uploads, are you going to be able to have all those kind of things? You know, like ACF had all of their array of fields. Do they have, do you have access to all of that? Are you going to be able to make your component have all of the options that you're going to need. And then on top of that, is it is that page builder well documented to be able to extend it? Are you going to have to dig through source code in order to figure out how to be able to make some of these components or do they have it pretty well laid out in their on their website? Another thing that you're going to want to think about is kind of the output of the components. And so you can set up the cleanest component possible as within the bounds that it gives you, but then it can also add its own stuff on top of it. You know, there could be reasons why it needs that because of maybe styling issues or things like that. If it needs wrapper divs around an, a heading element, and this is exactly what oxygen put on their website, which I thought was super interesting because, um, I use elementor for kind of the projects that I'm in charge of. And this was one thing that I ended up running into. And this was kind of a cool thing to come across with oxygen is because they list this out. So imagine that you are just putting in a heading element on the page in H1. How many wrapping elements or how many div tags does it generate when you just drag in that heading element? Well, oxygen says that they do zero. Elementor has seven. Beaver Builder and Divi both have nine. And that's pretty nuts if you start to stop to think about it because heading elements is just one as just one tag really but there's all these wrapping elements that have to go in it in order to make that heading element stylable and being able to shift it around on the page and stuff like that that's a crazy thing that you that i didn't uh, realize at the time but um and in fact uh, as a little side note um, I have a forked version of elementor that i had i ripped all those <laughs> wrapping elements out because i i don't need them um, but that those, the amount of divs that it generates for elements is super important because that increases the amount, the page size for your page. And if you are not using all of those extra features, uh, to style out all of those elements, it becomes a lot less, Im um, important to have them. And it becomes more of a burden. Another thing that you're going to want to think about is just the sheer size and speed of the pages that it can create. The folks over at Barrel Roll did a cool little um, comparison between some of the most popular builders. Um, not all of them, but some some good ones. Some that you know came to mind when I thought of page builders. And 
um, they just kind of attempted to create the same layout in these uh, five different page builders and kind of came up with some results. Obviously, it's not purely scientific. There were some factors in there that they didn't account for, like caching and things like that, and other things that you could do as a developer to make these things faster. But I think kind of like, you know, bare bones out of the box, it was a pretty good comparison here. And so you can kind of test, you know, these different page builders to see what exactly is causing these slowdowns. So a lot of these, um, I know, you know, WP Bakery has a, um, a demo site that you can get just for, um, you know, submitting your name or something like that. They send you like a link um, and then you can request, and then Elementor is free. I mean, Divi, you could probably get your hands on just to kind of test them out and explore what different uh, things are actually slowing the site down and what things you could actually deal with and what you can't. It's a pretty in-depth process. And I actually might, now that I'm saying it, might actually go in and try and do my own little, you know, test as well. So I might reach out to these guys and see if they'll let me use some copies of their plugins. But these are things that, you know, there's lots of articles out there that kind of already compare some of these items, but I thought that this would be a worth uh, while to bring up is checking to see kind of what are some of the things that just come out of the box that are slowing it down and what things that you can affect. Um, Another thing that I th was thought was really important when I was looking at page builders is kind of how the data is stored in each one of them. Um, ACF is kind of like a page builder in a sense. Um, when I think of page builders, I kind of think of more of like drag and drop and technically you can kind of do that same sort of thing with uh, flexible f uh, content fields, but um, ultimately it stores its data in a way that makes sense to me. It stores them all in meta fields and each field kind of has its own line in the database, in the post meta. Um, and so that's that's pretty good. Um, I mean, over the long term, if you've got lots of pages and each one has essentially duplicated meta fields for each uh, portion, that gets a little bit tricky, but um, with, the, with the, the sheer size of the database, but I don't know, it kind of depends. Um, Gutenberg probably has the silliest one in my opinion, which is it kind of throws in comments into the database to kind of, it's like one thing in the post content, which is good. It's only one line in the database, but that one thing is delineated by comments and it's got like the markup inside of there for the page, which is a little bit hard to parse if you're trying to actually read it out of the database and not just going through the Gutenberg kind of path of rendering out the content. It kind of does all that parsing. Um, WP Bakery's uh, page builder uses short codes in the content. So, you know, if you were to turn it, turn it off, you have all these short codes that are separating all of your content. Um, Elementor uses uh, like JSON in a meta field that just has one meta field it's called Elementor data. And it's a giant JSON string of all the different widgets that you have in there and all the different values for all the different settings of each widget in there. Um, so kind of using that, you can kind of, I mean, it depends on how much you're going to be messing with some of the, the data, like for example, making mass updates might be difficult in some cases, Gutenberg, it's for sure difficult. Um, but like WP bakery, let's say you have like a, like a button that has, you know, some like view plans or something like that in it. And that needs to be changed to view plan. It needs to be singular across the site or something like that. But you have view plans in all sorts of links and all sorts of like menu items and stuff like that. So you don't want to just do like a blanket, like find and replace in the database. It has to be targeted within the post content and it has to be inside of the button. And there's all these things that you have to account for that becomes increasingly difficult when it, when it's uh, inside of a, data type that's not super useful, like a short code. It's not really something that is, you know, as, um, is, is easy to work with as something, you know, like JSON, whereas you could just dump the JSON for every single uh, post or loop through every single post, dump the JSON, find the widget, find the, the setting that has view plans in it change it and you're done. So like, that's kind of a, a point in Elementor's favor, just because of the way that it stores its data and something to think about before you buy any of them. Um, and also you have to kind of think of what comes after the page builder. Uh, rarely you're gonna, it's gonna be a one and done kind of thing with some of these page builders. You might have some site that's on, 
uh, WP Bakeries, Page Builder, and all that. But eventually, like, they might sunset the the support for it, or maybe you're in Beaver Builder and you want to move on to something like Elementor or some, or just nothing, and you want to do all custom code or migrate completely out of WordPress, but all your data is in WordPress's database. So what do you do? Um, so things to think about is like Gutenberg, Elementor, and Beaver Builder end up leaving clean code behind because like, for example, with Elementor, if you create a page, it's got a bunch of buttons and images and all that kind of stuff. Every time that you hit save in Elementor, what it does is it takes the render and it puts it into the post content. So you have a giant um, HTML block inside of your post content that's representative of what you put inside of, um, you know, the page builder itself. So it's a representation of what's inside of that JSON object. And that's pretty cool for a couple of reasons. Number one is that once you deactivate Elementor, you still have something that will work on the front end minus, you know, like the CSS that maybe that you were using from Elementor. But if you were doing everything custom, it still works as if you didn't have Elementor installed at all. Um, and, but like with WP Bakery, like if you were to deactivate that, all of a sudden, all those short codes mean diddly squat. Like you're just going to be rendering out, you know, short codes that actually don't have any markup associated with them. So all of a sudden you're kind of like left scrambling, um, to figure out how to be able to render this, this, this code with, uh, out the plugin installed. And so that's something that can be. Um, very difficult to deal with in the end. So like you got to think about what's ahead. And so if there's ever a point in time where you're like, all right, I need an exit plan, the type of data that it leaves behind once you exit it and the type of, uh, or the type of code that it'll leave you is going to be super important. So, I mean, there's all sorts of other things to consider, like, you know, pricing and all this kind of stuff, but in the long run, if you, you know, the difference between $99 and $199, which is kind of what some of these are, are, are mostly going to run you, you're going to make that money over and over again, just by having like the sheer amount of time saved from using a page builder over doing everything custom. So, um, I'm not going to get too much into the weeds with that, but long story short, I think that there's some pretty interesting things to consider. And I try to go with the stuff that's a little less thought of when um, dealing with page builders. I'm not going to go into like, oh, this one has a slider and that's really cool. Or like this one lets you do this, that, and the other. That, like the features themselves, that's totally up for you to decide what's important and what's not important. But I personally have gone with Elementor for the past like two years now on some enterprise sites at work and um, obviously completely custom deactivated essentially every single widget that they had in there and we built our all of our own from scratch and it's done a really good job of getting us um, out of tech debt and into some place that is really good for the end content users to uh, to use and that was going to be my kind of final slide here is like well if it's going to be you know somebody else who's using the page builder and not you, you got to make sure that it's going to be something that's easy to use. And to me, just Elementor does that. And I don't mean to be an Elementor stand, but it's just, I, I did all this research at one point and it's the thing that I came up with as the thing that I uh, chose to move forward with at the company that I work for. So, um, long story short, these are some things to think about. Thank you guys for watching. I uh, appreciate my patrons for supporting me. If you're interested in some more advanced WordPress tutorials, I have a handful of tutorials there um, for all of my patrons. So um, I thank you guys for watching. Subscribe if you're new here, and I will see you in the next one.